Welcome to the Garmin Avionics GPS 175 and GNC 355 familiarization video. This video was created by the Garmin Aviation Training Team to assist you in becoming more aware of the products available that are excluded from the Garmin installation policy. This exclusion grants independent installers outside of the Garmin dealer network the ability to install these navigators. In this video, we'll discuss an overview of the GPS navigators, explain some of the limitations with the navigators, then we consider the installation planning and install requirements. We invite you to view the follow-on video, where we walk through the navigator's basic user interface and page functions, along with demonstrating examples setting up some of the common Garmin and third-party interfaces. Remember the information in this video never replaces or supersedes information and procedures in the applicable installation manuals. We'll begin by explaining some of the basic functions and features of the GPS navigators. The GPS 175 and GNC 355 are two products in the line of 2-inch form factor panel-mounted navigators that feature a color touchscreen display. The GPS 175 is a GPS WAS navigator with in-route, terminal, and precision non-precision approach capabilities when interfaced with an external CDI. The GNC 355 and GNC 355A combine the functionality of the GPS 175 but add a VHF COM radio transceiver. The GNC 355 supports 25 kHz channel spacing, while the GNC 355A version provides a pilot selectable option for 8.33 kHz or 25 kHz channel spacing for use in markets where required. Each unit features an internal AHAR sensor and is Bluetooth compatible, providing situational information, such as flight plan and position data, to a portable electronic device. Traffic and weather information may also be displayed if properly interfaced with a compatible line replaceable unit. The GPS 175 and GNC 355 can provide approved position source information to a compatible ADSB out device to meet ADSB out requirements. These units are a great low-cost IFR navigation solution designed for Part 23, Class 1 and 2, as well as experimental and amateur built aircraft. They are also an economical ADS-B traffic and weather display when interfaced with an external GDL-88 or GTX-345. An optional Flightstream 510 can also be installed for database concierge capability. Next, we'll discuss some of the limitations with the installation of these products. Keep in mind the navigator must be installed within the reach and field of view of the pilot. Installation of these units may require rearrangement of existing instruments to make room for the installed unit. Be sure to follow all requirements prescribed in the proper installation manual. When installing the navigator, there are some interfacing equipment limitations. The install manual is always your source for the list of approved interfacing equipment. The following connections are not approved. Interfacing to another navigator. TAS TCAS traffic information displayed on the navigator. The display of correlated traffic which cannot be connected to a GDL-88 or GTX-345 that is also interfacing to a TCAS system. Also, the navigators must not be configured for an ADS-BN display if correlated traffic is desired on a PFD or MFD. Lastly, the Flightstream 510 interface and data provided to a personal electronic device is not approved to replace any required or installed aircraft display equipment, which includes equipment for navigation or traffic or weather display. Now, we'll discuss the minimum VFR installation requirements. The navigator must be installed in a manufacturer's approved location for mounting a 6 and a quarter by 2 inch tall instrument panel cutout. Installation of an approved GPS SBAS antenna along with a compliant COM antenna for the GNC 355 is required for GPS navigation and VHF communication functions. An external CDI is required for installations using the RNAV navigation and glide slope information. 
Please note if the navigators do not meet the field of view requirements, then a remote loss of integrity and approach enunciators must be installed. Lastly, the installation must include a placard with GPS limited to VFR use only in clear view of the pilot and located immediately adjacent to the navigator. The requirements for an IFR installation require the minimum VFR criteria in addition to if the navigator will be used for GPS primary navigation, then an approved interfacing nav indicator must be mounted in the pilot's primary field of view or in the aircraft manufacturer's approved location. Additionally, the nav indicator must also have a vertical deviation and glide slope indicator in order to perform approaches with vertical guidance. The navigators can interface to other displays using a variety of data formats, including High Speed Data Bus, Airing 429, and RS-232. Refer to the installation manual for a listing of approved displays. The installation requires an external CDI, which could be part of an EFIS system, EHSI, or a standalone composite or analog CDI. A built-in OBS resolver can receive OBS angle information from a CDI HSI system. Depending on the CDI, the unit must have an optional switch, relay, and enunciator installed if existing nav radio functionality is desired to be retained. Remote source selection enunciators must be in the primary field of view to indicate whether an external nav radio source or the navigator's GPS output is selected. The navigators are approved to receive ADSB end data from a GDL88 or GTX345 and can interface to approved transponders as an ADSB out position source. Lastly, we'll discuss some installation considerations. The navigator must be mounted on the instrument panel or avionics stack so that the unit is reachable by the pilot and the display is viewable with minimal pilot head movement when transitioning between looking outside the cockpit and viewing or operating the navigator. A separate source selection enunciation must be installed inside the primary field of view area if the CDI HSI interfaces with both an existing RNAV and ILS and navigator in both VFR and IFR installation. The source selection enunciator must also be installed near the CDI HSI. A compatible CDI HSI with built-in enunciator may be used in lieu of a separate enunciator. Keep in mind when installing the navigators, there are differences in the depth of the units. The GPS-175 has a unit depth of 4.7 inches, and the GNC-355 has a depth of 10 inches. Ensure there's adequate room behind the instrument panel when installing the unit into the aircraft. The navigators do not require external cooling. Each unit contains an internal cooling fan. The exhaust fan pulls air through intakes on the bezels and case. Use caution to ensure the intakes and exhaust remain clear. Now that you have a better understanding and familiarity with the available Garmin GPS navigators, we invite you to view the companion video in this series, where we'll go over the user interface and page functions, along with some examples on the setup of common Garmin and third-party interfaces. We hope that you'll enjoy accomplishing further maintenance procedures with the enhancement and flexibility of the Garmin GPS navigators.